Hello everyone. The story I picked tonight is called Petunia. That's the name of this goose. That's also a name of a flower. <laughs> petunia. Petunia, petunia. In the meadow early one morning, Petunia, the silly goose, went strolling. She ate a bug here, clipped off a clover leaf there, and she picked at the dewdrops on the goldenrod leaves. Then suddenly she saw something she had never seen before in the meadow. What was it? A book. Petunia stole closer and closer and sniffed at it from all sides. By goosey gander, she said, it does not smell like food for a goose, but I believe I have seen such a thing before. Yes, I have seen one under Bill's arm when he came out of school. It's a book. That's it, a book. Come to think of it, just the other day, I heard Mr. Pumpkin telling Bill that books are very precious. He who owns books and loves them is wise. That is what he said. He who owns books and loves them is wise, repeated Petunia to herself. And she thought as hard and as long as she could. Well then, she said at last, if I take this book with me and love it, I will be wise too. And no one will call me a silly goose ever again. So Petunia picked up the book and off she went with it. She slept with it. She swam with it. And knowing that she was so wise, Petunia also became proud and prouder and prouder, so proud that her neck stretched out several notches. It was King the Rooster who first noticed the change in Petunia. He said, maybe Petunia is not so silly after all. She has a book and she looks so wise that she must be so. And the other animals began to believe in Petunia's wisdom too. They asked her for advice and opinions, and Petunia was glad to help, even when she was not asked. <clears throat> Petunia grew still prouder, and her neck stretched out another notch. One day, Petunia heard Clover the cow say to King the rooster, I wonder what makes your comb so red, King, as red as the barn. That's his comb on top of his head. That's what it's <laughs> called. It's my blood, said King. It's the color of my blood. Nonsense, said Clover. I have blood too, but I'm not a red cow. Your comb has been dipped in red barn paint. That's what makes it so red. You are both silly, of course, said Petunia. King, your comb was stuck on by the farmer so that he can tell you from the hens and know who lays eggs and who doesn't. Plastic comb, I'd say. And so King never again shook his proud comb in song for fear it might fall off. Poor sad rooster. But Petunia had other things to do. At the chicken coop, Ida, the hen, was cackling excitedly among her chicks. Oh, Petunia, she said, my chicks and I have been for a walk in the woods, and I think I've lost some of them. The farmer says I had nine, but I can't count so very well. Please, wise Petunia, count my chicks to see if they're all here. Glad to help, said Petunia. Hmm, let's see. Three chicks at the fountain, three at the feeder, and three at your legs. Three, three, and three. Now, three times three, that makes six. That's not right. No. Six, asked Ida. Six, is that less than nine? That's more than nine, not less, said Petunia. Lots more, my dear. More than nine? Good gracious, as if I hadn't enough worries with my own nine chicks. And where do those other chicks come from? Oh, dear, I'll never be happy again. Poor worried Ida. Did she tell her the right math? No. Look, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, that's six, that's seven, that's eight, and that's nine. Right. She still has nine. Yeah. But she told her she had six, and she, she thinks that six is more than nine, and six is less. 
Oh, dear. But Petunia had other things to do. In the meadow, she discovered part of Noisy the dog sticking out of a hole in the ground. Help, help, cried Noisy. I stuck my head in this rabbit hole, and now it won't come out. Help! Glad to help, said Petunia. It's a good thing I know what hunters do to get stubborn animals out of holes in the ground. They smoke them out. Wait until I fetch some sticks and some matches. Oh, no. And so wise Petunia built a fire in the other end of the hole and fanned it well with the book. Her trick worked nicely. Noisy, choking with smoke, jerked his head out of the hole and ran off howling in pain. His nose was singed with fire and his ears were cut and bruised. Poor moaning dog. Do you think that book is making Petunia very wise? I don't think so, no. But Petunia had other things to do. Beside the hedgerow, she met Straw, the horse, who was in pain from a toothache. Petunia, groaned Straw, I'm dying. Surely with your wisdom, you can stop this horrible pain. Glad to help, said Petunia. Open your mouth. Why, you poor straw, all these teeth. No wonder you have a toothache. Look at me. Do I have teeth? Of course not. So I have no toothache. I am going to stop that pain right now. I am going to pull all those teeth out, all of them. Let me get some pliers. <gasps> but straw would not wait for the pliers. He was so afraid to lose his teeth that he never talked of his toothache to another soul. He suffered in silence. Poor forlorn horse. Oh, dear. But Petunia had other things to do. Cotton, the kitten, went up the tree, you see, <laughs> but could not come down. While he meowed and meowed, his friends called for Petunia. Glad to help, said Petunia. I know just what to do. Since none of you is tall enough to reach Cotton, all of you will do it together. Donkey on top of clover, pig on top of donkey, and so on, and so on up. Simple. So donkey climbed on top of clover, pig on top of donkey, goat on top of pig, sheep on top of goat, piggy on top of sheep, turkey on top of piggy, duck on top of turkey, and hen on top of duck. Suddenly clover cried out, stop! My wigs, my legs feel wobbly, and she sat. Oh no, they all collapsed. And Donkey and the rest fell into a heap, and Cotton was so scared that she fell on top of them. They were all full of bumps. Well, said Petunia, Cotton is down. So he was, poor bruised kitten. But Petunia had other things to do. Getting prouder all the time, she felt her neck stretch further out. She now wandered down the meadow where she found some other friends gathered around a box. Ah, wise Petunia, they shouted. We found this box in the ditch beside the road. Maybe it's food, Petunia. Please tell us what the writing on it says. Glad to help, said Petunia. Now let's see why... Candies, that's what it says on the box. Yes, candies. You may eat them. Yes, of course. What does it say? Danger. Firecrackers. And on top it says fragile. That's not candy. Yeah, Firecrackers. Yeah. No sooner had Petunia given the word than seven greedy mouths tore up the box and grabbed the candies out of it and... <gasps> Boom! Exploded. What a sight the animals were. Some were burned. Some were bruised. Straw still suffered in silence. He still has a toothache. Noisy still moaned. Ida still was worried about her chicks. And King still brooded over his comb. All the barnyard was in trouble. All because of Petunia. Petunia's pride and wisdom had exploded with the firecrackers. Her neck had shrunk back to its old size and was all bandaged up. She was the most downhearted of all. 
for she saw now that she was not a bit wise. But suddenly Petunia spied the book. The firecrackers had blown it open so that the pages showed she had never seen them before. She had never even opened it. <laughs> now she saw that there was something written inside the book which she could not read. So she sat down and thought and thought and thought until at last she sighed, Now I understand. It was not enough to carry wisdom under my wing. I must put it in my mind and in my heart. And to do that, I must learn to read. Petunia was filled with joy. At once she began to work so that one day she could be truly wise then she could help make her friends happy. So <laughs> just carrying a book around doesn't make you smart or wise. You have to read what's inside of it, don't yeah. you? Let's read this one too. This one's called All By Myself. This little critter. Yeah. I can get out of bed all by myself. I can button my overalls. I can brush my fur. I can put on my socks and tie my shoes. Oh, it looks like you tied them together. I can pour some juice for my little sister. Uh-oh, I think he needs to practice that one some more. And help her eat breakfast. I can pull a duck for her. I can drive my truck. I can ride my bike. I can give a drink to my bear. Hey, it's soaking wet. Right. I can kick my ball and roll on the ground. I can pound with my hammer. I can sail my boat. A mice mm -hmm. I can look after my little sister. <laughs> He's got her on a leash. <laughs> I can help Dad trim a bush or ice a cake for Mom. I can look at a book and find a mouse. I can color a picture. I can put my toys away and get into my pajamas. I can brush my teeth. I can put myself to bed. He can do a lot of stuff by himself, can he? No. He used too much toothpaste. He can't do a lot of stuff by himself. Well, he's trying. He's trying. But I can't go to sleep without a story. And he needs his mom or dad to read him a story. Mm. Oh, good night, it says. Good. Oh, we got to do our Bible story. This story is called The Boat in the Storm. Jesus was very busy. There always seemed to be a lot of people wanting to see him. One evening, he said to his close friends, Come, let's go in our boat across to the other side of the lake. His friends got into the boat with him. In the boat, Jesus soon fell asleep. Suddenly, a strong wind began to blow. The waves began to crash against the sides of the boat. The waves began to spill into the boat. Wake up and help us, shouted Jesus' friends. We are going to sink with the boat. That would be scary. Yeah, it's because Jesus was asleep. Yeah. So Jesus stood up. Be quiet, he said to the waves. Be still, he said to the wind. Then everything was calm. Everything that was dark and dangerous and scary just went away. The day came bright and clear. See? So the winds and waves obeyed Jesus. Yep. What made you so scared, asked Jesus. Don't you believe in God? Jesus' friends knew they were safe, but they were more scared than ever. Who is our friend Jesus, they asked each other. Who can he be? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Dear Jesus. Yep. 
Good night. Good night.